In this question, we're looking at this 3 by 4 matrix D, and we're asked to find a basis for its kernel. Hi. In this question, we're asked to look at this matrix D, which is a 3 by 4 matrix, and to find a basis for its kernel, thereby also finding its nullity. So let's begin by reviewing the basic definitions and the sort of image that you might want to have in your mind in terms of what's going on here. It's a very important picture associated with this algebra. Okay, so first of all, the definition. The kernel of D, what does that mean? Well, it's the set of X, in this case, R4, same as the number of columns, such that D times X equals zero. There's a picture that's associated with this. So if you take a, a vector, let's say the vector, uh, say, 1, 1, 1, 1, and apply D to it, okay? So that would be 1, 2, 5, 0, 1 minus 1 minus 4, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 1, and then we're multiplying by 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, so the sum is 1 plus 2 plus 5, that's uh, 8. 1 plus minus 1 plus minus 4, that's minus 4, and then minus 1 plus 0 plus 1 plus 1. Okay, so when we take the matrix D and we multiply on the right by the vector 1, 1, 1, 1, we get the 3 vector 8 minus 4, 1. So we're going from a vector in R4 to a vector in R3. That's the effect of multiplying on the left by this 3 by 4 matrix. So the picture that we can have in mind is that over here is four-dimensional space. And we have a transformation from that four-dimensional space to this three-dimensional space. What is a transformation? It's something that takes a vector x, like 1, 1, 1, 1, and multiplies it by d. Okay, that could be anywhere. Let's put it here. So here is d times x. So the input, the output, is the effect of multiplying by d. And it takes us from a four-dimensional vector to a three-dimensional vector. And the kernel now consists of all those vectors over here that have the property that when you do this transformation, you end up just with a zero vector over here. Okay. So this is some subspace of the four-dimensional space that gets mapped to zero. That's the kernel of the matrix. And this is a subspace, so it could be perhaps the zero vector in principle, or it could be a line through the origin. It could be a plane like I've drawn here. It could also be a three-dimensional kind of slab in this four-dimensional space, or it could be all of the four-dimensional space. Those are the various possibilities. And the dimension of this space is the nullity. So the nullity of D is the dimension of the kernel of D. So we're looking here in this question for a basis for the kernel. That means we're looking for some vectors in the kernel which span the kernel and which are linearly independent. The number of elements in the basis will be equal to the nullity. How do we do it? Well, the main technique is, of course, row reduction. Okay, so the equation we're trying to solve is d times x equals zero, and here x is a general vector in four-dimensional space, say x1, x2, x3, x4. So we're looking to solve the system. The augmented matrix would have a column of zeros on the right-hand side, so we really just need to row reduce the matrix itself, that column of zeros isn't going to do anything for us. Okay, so let's do a bit of row reduction. Start 1, 2, 5, 0, 1 minus 1 minus 4, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 1. So row 2, we'll take row 2 and subtract row 1, that will be the new row 2. And the new row 3 will be the old row 3 plus row 1. So we're using this pivot entry here to get rid of the entries below it. So what do we get? We get 
uh, this minus this. So the first row stays where it is. And then 1 minus 1, minus 1 minus 2, minus 4 minus 5, and 0 minus 0. And here this plus this is a 0, a 2, a 6, and a 1. Okay, at the next stage, we could uh, say, take row 3 and divide it by minus 3. Make it a little bit simpler. We get 1, 2, 5, 0, 0, 1, 3, 0, and 0, 2, 6, 1. Okay, and then we would take that and use this element here to get rid of the 2 below it. So row 3 equals row 3 minus 2 times row 2, giving us 1, 2, 5, 0, 0, 1, 3, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, it's uh, in row echelon form. There are the pivot entries there. In fact, it's almost in fully reduced row echelon form. All what we need to do is get rid of the 2 that's sitting on top of that 1, and then it will be uh, the case that all the columns containing the pivot entries are completely clear of any other stuff. So let's do that, and it will be fully reduced row echelon form, but be able to read off solutions. So row 1 will be row 1 uh, minus 2 times row 2. And that will give us 1, 0, this minus 2 times that, minus 1, a 0, a 0, 1, 3, 0, and a 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, so it's in fully reduced row echelon form. What can we deduce? Well, here are the pivot entries. So here are the pivot columns. And this other one right here, this is a non-pivot column that corresponds to a parameter, say parameter lambda. So the third variable, x3, will be set equal to lambda. And then we'll be able to read the solutions off that x1 equals a lambda because the first equation is really x1 minus x3. 3 equals 0, so x1 equals x3, or lambda. The second equation is really x2 plus 3, x3 equals 0, so x2 will be minus 3 lambda. x3 will just be equal to lambda, because that's what we introduced. And x4 is just equal to 0. So altogether, we get that the solution x is lambda minus 3 lambda, lambda 0, which we can all write as lambda times 1 minus 3, 1, 0. Okay, so there is the uh, crucial description of the solutions to the equation dx equals 0. The vector 1 minus 3, 1, 0 is a solution. And let's just check that quickly. If we multiply by 1 minus 3, 1, 0, 1 minus 3, 1, yes, that'll sum to 0. 1 times minus 3 plus 1, um, yes, that'll sum to 0. And 1 minus 3, 1, 0, yes, that'll sum to 0. So that does work. So a basis for the kernel of D is, well, just this vector, 1 minus 3, 1, 0. And the nullity, the nullity of D is the number of elements in that basis, which is 1.